Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing drug addiction. Okay, so before we can see how uh, the drugs of addiction all work, okay, we need to discuss the natural reward uh, system within the brain. Okay, and uh, before we actually discuss that natural reward system in the brain, I want to do the neuroanatomy that's involved in that structure. Okay, so we've seen one of the key things at the moment, which is the ventral tegmental area, which is this collection of dopaminergic neurons uh, within the midbrain. Okay, and these dopaminergic neurons are going to send their axons to certain very important structures, uh, and th this connection between the ventral tegmental area and these important structures is going to be central to the brain's uh, reward system, okay, as we currently understand it. Okay, so the two places that the ventral tegmental area sends dopaminergic axons to is the cortex, and that pathway is known as the mesocortical pathway, and then the nucleus cumbens, and that pathway is known as the mesolimbic pathway. So I want to now look at the anatomy of the mesocortical pathway and the mesolimbic pathway. Okay, so we're going to start off by uh, going back to one of the pictures that we drew earlier, particularly this picture here. Okay, and we're now going to look at this picture from a different angle. So we're going to look at it from above. So I'll start off by again showing the midbrain drawn from above. And now I'm going to put the thalamus on top here. And we're also going to show the hypothalamus as well. Okay, because we want to see where the dopaminergic axons are going to run. And they're going to run in something known as the medial forebrain bundle, or the MFB. Okay, so I want to show this. And they're going to run in this, by the way, in for both the mesocortical pathway and the mesolimbic pathway. So this is going to kill two birds with one stone, basically, by discussing this uh, particular bundle. Okay, right. Uh, so let's start, then, by showing the midbrain. Okay, so here is the left side of the midbrain, the left cerebral peduncle here. Okay, then we've got the left superior colliculus here. Okay, the right superior colliculus here. Okay, the right cerebral peduncle here. Okay, like so. And then uh, they'll come together in the middle here. Like so. Okay, so here is the midbrain. Okay, and we will mark on this incredibly important area to us now, which is the ventral tegmental area, okay, here in blue. Now, I'm going to show the thalami sitting on top of the midbrain, which is a picture we haven't drawn before, okay? So, this will illustrate the fact that you have a left thalamus and a right thalamus nicely. So, perched on top of the left side of the midbrain, you then have the left thalamus, and it, it truly is this egg-shaped structure. Okay, so there's the left thalamus. Okay, and sitting on top of the right side of the midbrain, you then have the right thalamus. Okay, here. So let's colour these two in in turquoise. Okay, and ideally they would have been the same size exactly. Okay, but it's just a picture. So here is the left thalamus, and here then is the right thalamus. Okay, now I've drawn this so that I can show um, Firstly, that there is a gap in between the two thalami, and this is going to be full of cerebrospinal fluid, okay? And this cerebrospinal fluid is going to be in continuum with that cerebral aqueduct below, okay? And this great cavity of cerebrospinal fluid has a very special name, okay? So this is known as the third ventricle. Okay, so it's not particularly important for the uh, brain reward system, but just, uh, you know, for a bit of background neuroanatomy, there you are, that's the third ventricle. Okay, um, now, um, again, something that's not particularly relevant to us, but just to put the, in the additional structures in the neuroanatomy, uh, the back of the third ventricle, okay, making up the back of this boundary here, okay, is going to be a structure known as the pineal gland. Okay, so in red here, this is the pineal gland, which makes up the uh, back wall of the third ventricle. Okay, and now going further forward, something that is going to be relevant to us, because it's going to have the medial forebrain bundle running through it, is the hypothalamus. Okay, so remember when we were looking from the side, 
The hypothalamus looked like this. It was in front of the thalamus and in front of the midbrain here. And as far as we could see from this picture here, it was just one great solid lump. Okay, that is not correct. That is misleading. Okay, and if you look from above, you would see that the hypothalamus is not just one solid lump. Instead, it's actually hollow. It's got a great big cavity in the middle, which is the continuation of the third ventricle forward. Okay, and annoyingly, this word nucleus accumbens here is right where I would like to draw the hypothalamus. Okay, I'm just going to draw it anyway, and that word will have to deal with it. Okay, so here is uh, the hypothalamus here, okay, stretching forward from the thalami. Okay, so basically you might have thought from looking at the from one side that the hypothalamus was just a solid lump sitting here, but instead it's got this hole here which is in continuum with the uh, gap that's in between the two thalami here, and in fact this is all third ventricle here, all of this area here, all of this is third ventricle, in continuum with the cerebrospinal fluid, and it's all full of cerebrospinal fluid. Okay, right, um, sorry, in continuum with the cerebral aqueduct, and it's all full of cerebrospinal fluid. Okay, right, so the hypothalamus then is this sheet of grey matter that makes up the wall of the third ventricle and it also makes up the floor of the third ventricle as well. The mammillary bodies will be, if you drill down here and here, you'd find the two mammillary bodies. Okay, so the hypothalamus is also making up the floor. Okay, now why have we shown all of this? Well, basically, the dopaminergic neurons from the ventral tegmental area that are going in both the mesocortical and the mesolimbic pathways are going to be sent forward, okay, and they're going to run in two pathways that are within the hypothalamus, okay, one on this side and one on this side. Oh, and this is another important point, okay, so again, you only have one hypothalamus. People would not say that you have two hypothalami, okay, however, you can see that the hypothalamus is very distinctly split into two halves. There is the left half of the hypothalamus and the right half of the hypothalamus. And people therefore do often say the left hypothalamus and the right hypothalamus. However, no one would ever say that there were two hypothalami. Okay, so running in each half of the hypothalami, uh, sorry, I've, <laughs> I've just said it, uh, running in each half of the hypothalamus, uh, you have these bundles of dopaminergic neurons. Okay, so this is not just supposed to represent one dopaminergic neuron, this is supposed to represent an entire bundle of dopaminergic axons running together. Okay, and this bundle of dopaminergic axons running together is known as the medial forebrain bundle. Okay, so you have two medial forebrain bundles. You have a left medial forebrain bundle and a right medial forebrain bundle. And for short, the medial forebrain bundle, whoops, not like that, is often abbreviated as the MFB. Okay, right. So the medial forebrain bundle here. Okay, so the um, dopaminergic axons that are running in the medial forebrain bundle, those are going to be being delivered to both the cortex and the nucleus accumbens in the uh, mesocortical pathway and the mesolimbic pathway respectively. Okay, so we're firstly now going to see how these neurons are going to get to the cortex in the mesocortical pathway, and then what we'll do is we'll firstly discuss where the nucleus accumbens actually is, and then uh, we will um, talk about the mesolimbic pathway and how these dopaminergic neurons are going to leave the medial forebrain bundle and get to the uh, nuclear nucleus accumbens. Okay, right. Um, so, uh, let's talk about the mesocortical pathway. Now, to see the mesocortical pathway properly, what you have to do is take a sagittal section of the brain down the middle. Okay, so I want to make sure that everyone is familiar with the concept of a sagittal section. Okay, so basically, a sagittal section means that you will put your knife at the front and, uh, sorry, you will put the front of your knife at the front of the head and you will put your, the back of your knife at the back of the head. Okay, so if I show the head here, 
here are your eyes, right at the front here, one here and one here. You would put the front of your knife here and the back of your knife here and you would chop down, okay? And then you would open uh, the head up and then look at what you can see in this exposed surface now. That is what is meant by a sagittal section. I'm going to take a sagittal section of the brain now, and I'm going to cut the cerebral hemispheres completely equally in half. So I'm going to completely go down equally and cut the brain in half, and then I'm going to open that up and have a look at what I see. Okay, and that's the section I'm going to use to show you the mesocortical pathway. Okay, right. So let me draw this here. So basically, here is the uh, oh, I need to tell you which side we're going to look at. We're going to look at the right-hand side, okay? Um, so we're going to look at this half here, okay? From the side that's open, okay? Not from the side uh, which hasn't been cut at all. Okay, so here is the right cerebral hemisphere then, and we're looking at the medial aspect that we wouldn't have been able to see before I've done the cut. Okay, so the new opened aspect. And it's going right round like so till we get to the back here. Okay, then you've got the temporal lobe seen here. Okay, and now you're going to have the brainstem structures here, which have been cut in half. Remember, they sat right in the midline. We have cut right down the midline, so we've got the right hand half of the brainstem structures. Okay, so here is the right hand half of the pons here. Okay, and here is the right hand half of the medulla below there, and then the right-hand half of the spinal cord below that. Okay, so let's try and colour code this. So here is the pons in blue here. Okay, here in red is the medulla below. Okay, and here in green is the spinal cord below that. Okay, right. Then above the pons, we've then got the uh, right-hand half of the midbrain here. Okay, and above that, we've got the right thalamus here. Okay, and then sitting in front of these two structures, we've then got the right-hand half of the hypothalamus here. So here's the optic chiasm, here's the right-hand half of the pituitary stalk, the right-hand half of the pituitary gland, the right uh, mammillary body here, and then there's the rest of the hypothalamus. Okay, now let's just complete it up. So bring that connecting up there, and then we'll have the cerebellum, the, well, the right-hand half of the cerebellum, sitting here. Okay, right, so let's colour in a few more structures. Here is our right thalamus here. Okay, now, where is the ventral tegmental area here? Well, here's the right-hand half of the ventral tegmental area. Here are the dopaminergic uh, neurons sending their axons into the right medial forebrain bundle that's in the right side of the hypothalamus here. Okay, and now what's going to happen is these axons are going to go round into the white matter, okay, of the cerebral hemisphere, and they're going to gradually be distributing themselves out to the cerebral cortex. So it will go round in this great long loop, basically, okay, going round the entire cerebral cortex and off this great a cord of dopamine fibers, you're gradually getting axons coming off as they go and deliver dopamine to the uh, neurons which are in the cerebral cortex up here. Okay, like so. And this is how you're delivering these axons of the dopaminergic neurons from the ventral tegmental area to the cortex. So this pathway that we have shown here, this truly is the mesocortical pathway. Okay, right. Now, uh, the mesolimbic pathway is going to be extremely important in uh, the reward system, but the mesocortical pathway is also going to be important. I wouldn't be mentioning it if it wasn't important, okay? But the, it's the mesocortical pathway to a specific portion of cortex that is believed to be extremely important in the reward system. And this specific portion of cortex is what's known as the medial prefrontal cortex. So I want to now show you where this medial prefrontal cortex actually is. Okay, and by the way, medial prefrontal cortex is often abbreviated to M for medial, and then prefrontal cortex is abbreviated to PFC. Okay, so where is this medial 
prefrontal cortex then? Where is this MPFC? Okay, so this is why it's really good that we have drawn the sagittal section like so, because we wouldn't have been able to see the medial prefrontal cortex without having drawn this sagittal section, because it is a portion of cortex that faces into the uh, great longitudinal fissure. And I think I'll just draw an additional picture to show this. So basically, if you look at someone's intact brain from above, okay, what you will see is something that looks like this. Okay, you will see the two separate cerebral hemispheres here. Okay, here is the left cerebrum, the left cerebral hemisphere. Okay, and then we also have the right cerebrum. Okay, I won't label up the right cerebrum separately. And you have this great crease in between them where basically the cerebral cortex invaginates inwards. And this is known as the great longitudinal fissure. Now this is not just a great big hole between the two cerebral hemispheres. Instead, what you should really think of this is a folding or an invagination of the cerebral cortex inwards. Okay, you should imagine that what someone has effectively done is moulded this. They have just basically put their finger on the cerebral cortex and pressed it down. Okay, and they've made an entire great uh, crack here. Okay, but the cerebral cortex still lines the entire thing, basically. Okay, so if you were a little man and you could go into the great longitudinal fissure and you were walking down the edge of it, you would be walking on cerebral cortex, okay? So there is cerebral cortex hidden from view that is facing into the crack of the great longitudinal fissure, okay? And that's some of the cortex that we're exposing here by having cut right down the great longitudinal fissure when we did this uh, sagittal section, okay? And it's this portion here that I'm particularly interested in, okay? This is facing into the great longitudinal fissure over here, okay? And this is the portion that's known as the medial prefrontal cortex. So prefrontal cortex, that means it's right at the front of the brain, okay? Medial means it's very close to the midline. Well, this certainly is close to the midline. You can't really get any more closer to the midline, okay? You're actually facing into the great longitudinal fissure. You're not even visible from the outside. You'd have to be a little man going into the great longitudinal fissure to even find the medial prefrontal cortex. Okay, so the medial prefrontal cortex then is getting a dopamine supply from the ventral tegmental area along with all the other bits of the cortex. But it's this dopamine input to the prefrontal cortex that alone that is believed to be the important part of the mesocortical pathway as far as the natural reward system is concerned. And therefore it's the portion that concerns us uh, when we're talking about drug addiction. Okay, the mesolimbic pathway is totally involved in uh, the natural reward system as well, but it's this specific portion of the mesocortical pathway that's involved in drug addiction rather than the rest of it. Okay, so the dopamine projections to the occipital lobe, for instance, aren't believed to be that important in the natural reward system. Okay, it's this connections up here and also the mesolimbic connections that are going to be extremely important. Okay, right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn our attention to the mesolimbic pathway. So we're going to throw aside the mesocortical pathway, okay, and we're going to turn our attention onto the mesolimbic pathway. Okay, so this is the pathway whereby dopaminergic neurons in the ventral tegmental area are going to send their axons to the nucleus accumbens. Okay, so we need to discuss the anatomy then of the nucleus accumbens, where it is, before we can actually discuss the pathway from the ventral tegmental area to the nucleus accumbens. So, in order to discuss the nucleus accumbens, which by the way is usually abbreviated down to N for nucleus and then AC for accumbens, okay, we need to discuss the anatomy of the striatum because the nucleus accumbens is part of the striatum. Okay, so, Let's go then, trying to find the striatum. So, this picture here is going to be extremely helpful, okay? And I regret now having put all these labels around it, okay? Basically, there are structures that are sitting either side of the two thalami, 
okay? And these are going to be our starting point for discussing the striatum, so I'll just put one of them in here now. Okay, so at the same level as the thalami, okay, so if we go back to our brainstem picture here, we'd be drawing something in front of the thalamus here, okay? Right, so on this side of the thalamus, well, we're talking about the left side here, so we've got the left one here, but we'd also have the right one here. This structure that I've just drawn is what's going to be known as the lenticular nucleus, okay? Right, and it's called that because it looks reasonably like a lens, okay? Now, the lenticular nucleus is divided up into two separate portions, okay? One portion that I'm now colouring in in orange here, and this portion that I'm now colouring in in orange, I'm going to take the uh, labels further away so that I've got more space to put additional things in, okay? This portion that's being coloured in in orange is the putamen. Okay, the portion that's more medial to the putamen and is, and is closer to the thalamus is then called the globus pallidus. Okay, right, and the globus pallidus isn't going to be very important for our discussion here, but it's just part of the anatomy that we're going to have to discuss in order to get to the nucleus accumbens. Right, okay, so that's the lenticular nucleus. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this picture from a different angle again. Okay, so I'm going to go back to drawing the picture from the left-hand side. So we're going to be looking at this from the left-hand side again. Okay, so let's draw this once again. So we start then with the midbrain. Okay, the midbrain is here, let's say. And then sitting on top of the midbrain we then have the thalamus, so we're familiar with this by now, okay, and we're looking from the left-hand side, so this will be the left thalamus. Now what we've got, in front of the left thalamus now, we can see the putamen. We cannot see the globus pallidus, because the globus pallidus is behind the putamen here. Okay, so here's the putamen in orange. Now, the next portion that I want to show is the chordate nucleus. So the chordate nucleus sits attached to the putamen at the front here, and then it curves round in this great curved way here, like so, and then has a great tail. Okay, and this will be more clear when, once I've coloured that in. Okay, so I'll colour this in in vivid purple so that it stands out completely and utterly. Okay, so all of this, this is a structure known as the chordate nucleus, and it's in the same plane as the putamen, okay? So it's sitting just beside the thalamus, okay? And you can see how it's sort of height from this picture, okay? So I'll dash it in in pink as well, okay? And of course you will have two of these. You'll have a left one as, here, as shown here, and then you'll have a right one on the other side as well, just as you had two putamens and two globus pallidus's and two thalami. Okay, so this is the left chordate nucleus that we're seeing here, uh, but there would be a right chordate nucleus as well. So this is the left chordate nucleus. Okay, right. And together, the putamen and the chordate, the putamen here in orange and the chordate, are collectively known as the putamen... Uh, oh, sorry, no, not as the putamen chordate. It's co they're collectively known as the chordate putamen. Okay, that's better. Right. Now, what then is the striatum, and where is the nucleus accumbens? Well, the striatum is the chordate, the putamen, plus the nucleus accumbens, okay? And the nucleus accumbens is the bit that is sort of missing here, the, there's a gap here, and that's going to be the nucleus accumbens. So in green here, this structure, this is the nucleus accumbens. Okay, right. And that entire structure that you've now got there, okay, the putamen, the nucleus accumbens, and the chordate, but not the globus pallidus, okay, that entire structure is known as the striatum. And of course, you have a left striatum and a right striatum. Now, some people will even go further and call it the corpus striatum, that's the full name, okay, uh, but uh, striatum is more common.
Okay, so this entire thing is the corpus striatum. And now we have the structure that we need. We're not going to need the putamen or the chordate. Okay, it's good to know the terminology striatum because you'll see that all over the place whenever you read anything about the nucleus accumbens. Okay, but the nucleus accumbens is what we're after. Okay, right. So, now what we want to see is the mesolimbic pathway. We want to see how dopaminergic neurons in the ventral tegmental area are going to send their axons into the nucleus accumbens. Okay, well, let's try and put the nucleus accumbens on this pathway. So, here's the putamen. If we were to try and put the chordate on this picture, and this might go horribly wrong, the chordate would look kind of like this. Now, it's difficult to show because, of course, it's much better shown from the side. It, from the side, you can see it looping around. From above, really, you just see the top of it. But I'm going to try and show it looping around here. Okay, so like so, I'm going to have to draw across the pictures that I've already put here. So here's the tail of the chordate nucleus here. Okay, so in purple, here is the chordate attached to the putamen there. Okay, then it's looping up at the moment towards the top of the thalamus, and that's looping back down, it's going under the putamen, and then it's going off down there. Okay, right. And then the nucleus accumbens would be this little portion right at the base under here. Okay, so this would be the nucleus accumbens. And of course, you'd have the equivalent structure on this side as well. So this is the left stratum. You'd have the mirror image of this on the right. So um, here would be the uh, lenticular nucleus here, and then, let, in fact, actually, since we're halfway there, I'll just do the full thing. So here is the globus pallidus on this side, okay, here is the right putamen on this side, okay, now to put the chordate nucleus in, and I'm, am I going to make a mistake here? No, it's around like this. Okay, here comes the chordate nucleus, symmetric to the chordate nucleus on the other side, Okay, uh, so we'll cover that in in vivid purple. Okay, so this is the um, right chordate nucleus here. Okay, and then underneath that, in this little sort of gap here, would be the right nucleus accumbens, the portion that we're interested in. Okay, now, dopaminergic neurons are going to leave the medial forebrain bundle and go into the nucleus accumbens, like so, okay, uh, and that then, that is the mesolimbic pathway, this pathway which uh, the axons of dopaminergic neurons can take from the ventral tegmental area into the medial forebrain bundle, out of the me uh, medial forebrain bundle, into the nucleus accumbens, that's known as the mesolimbic pathway. Okay, right, so, the one final thing I want to say in this video, okay, before we'll end this video and then begin the uh, full-blown uh, reward system theory uh, in the next video, is that you mainly have D1 receptors for dopamine in the cortex. So in cortical areas, the main receptor for dopamine on the neurons is going to be D1 receptors. Whereas, in the nucleus accumbens, this important limbic system structure, you have both D1 receptors and also D2 receptors. Okay, so those are the main types of dopamine receptors that are used on neurons in the cortex and the nucleus accumbens.